So we're here with Misha Dollar. Um, he's down there in London. Misha, how are you doing? Tell us a little bit about yourself uh, uh, and how, you know, you've been involved in the whole world of communications and engineering. At King's College London, I'm part of the Centre for Telecom Research, and our main focus is really to do anything related to telecommunications. When I say do, I mean research, come up with new technology, new architectures, implement, tinker, build prototypes, uh, con actually connect also with industry, contribute to standards, um, also spin out companies. And we do that across the entire board of telecoms, including the actual mobile phone technology, but also AI, which is powering the actual systems or applications we put on top. Wow. So you're the right man to come to to talk about app tracking. How do you think the app tracking is going to work in the UK? And do you think um, that the data itself uh, that they will be recording will help fight the pandemic? So a good question. Let's start maybe looking at the utility of the solution. So clearly, you know, it, uh, history from, from other countries and, you know, experience from other countries has shown it is a useful thing to have. And the reason is because if you want to figure out who's been in touch with whom, you can either do this manually, almost like Sherlock Holmes style, knock on people's doors and, and conduct interviews, which is very lengthy and burdensome, or you use technology of the uh, 20, 21st century, which is, of course, everything around smartphones. So in principle, I think we can all agree if we had technologies like this in place, it would be value add to anybody in the NHS, uh, as well as you know helping us to diminish the risk and therefore saving lives. The other question is, how do we do it technically? So to do that today, we could do that. We would need to talk to bigger companies such as Google, Facebook. They could implement things fairly, fairly quickly. Um, we could also uh, encourage people to download apps in addition. So we could get a fairly dense, dense map of these type of tracking devices very quickly. The more fundamental question is, is what's the ethics around it? What are the privacy implications of that? And uh, I think it's a very good question uh, we are posing here in that we do have technologies today which can assure that the data cannot be misused or abused or used in any other context, but for saving lives as part of that pandemic right now. Um, the Essentially, we need to make sure that these technologies being implemented, uh, technologies which ensure transparency, such as blockchain technology, oversight technology, we all have that. Uh, if we have this properly implemented, in theory, we should be able to guard privacy whilst also maintaining the, the utility of, of helping the NHS to trace, essentially, contacts. And, and we hear a lot about the fact that it's using Bluetooth, how does it actually work? How does an app using Bluetooth help understand the pandemic and warn me that I need a test or, or whatever? You have many ways of doing that. So the first one, probably the more obvious one, isn't about Bluetooth. It's really using just a location and recording location where anybody has been, of course, in a, a privacy uh, you know, savvy manner. The Bluetooth only helps to substantiate that because Bluetooth, what it does, you know, when you have your Bluetooth on, it is listening constantly. Your Wi-Fi does the same actually. It's all the time listening who's around. And if another Bluetooth is around and the other Bluetooth says, hello, I'm here, they're starting to, to, to exchange information. And that information actually is quite unique to your mobile phone. It doesn't say this is uh, Misha speaking here or Mark speaking or anybody else, but it has an ID. You know, the, we call these MAC addresses. Uh, which are uh, unique to your device. And they're being exchanged. And you could, in theory, record these and uh, bring them in a, again, privacy uh, savvy manner. You can hash them. We have hash techniques to do that uh, into a database. And then you can essentially compare these hashes and you understand really quickly who has been around whom. Bluetooth is interesting because the range is low. So you don't need to do a lot of magic there. You know that if somebody is connected on Bluetooth, that means they aren't too far. Whereas if you use Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi can often see you know hundreds of meters, not very useful. So therefore, Bluetooth is kind of a natural candidate combined with the allocation to offer that type of service. And do you, do you think these trackers are really going to make a difference or are they something that governments are using to actually show that they're doing something? So that's more a, a political question, and uh, you know, I'm, I, it's not really my my cup of tea, really. You know, clearly the government uh, has done mistakes, you know, and uh, they're admitting it as much. Uh, but I think this is a good step. So you know, to to know where. 
people have been in contact would help us to ease now the 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 lock the lock in we are in currently go into the into the you know opening phase etc i think it will be a useful tool so i really don't think the government is after trying to understand who who is who what are they doing etc if they wanted that information they can obtain that through other means so this i think there's a genuine purpose here to help the crisis and you know, is it going to be one of those things that we're going to need forever? Or do you think that there's a, a length of time where we'd all be able to delete them off our phones and, and know that if we are keen on our own privacy, that they wouldn't be intruding on us anymore? Yeah, you can delete that any time. Uh, if you download it as an app, if it's part of a larger code family, maybe more complicated to do that. But I'm sure that will be instantiated once the time comes. But as long as the crisis lasts, I think we really need tools like these to really help essentially the NHS. And I'm trusting the expert here, so I haven't done my own research trying to understand whether, there's an, whether there aren't other tools who could help us potentially. But assuming that's one good way and cheap and effective way of doing, then I would encourage the, the government and institutions as well as consumers to adopt that and help essentially that pipeline. Yeah, And, uh, you know, whether we need it forever, we'll see. You know, the, uh, there are loads of viruses out there which, for which we have never found a vaccination. You can read up on that. So how long that crisis will last, how quickly the virus will mutate, it's out of my pay grade. It's not within my, uh, my it's not part of the telecom 5G, 6G uh, research agenda. I can't help you here, I'm, I'm afraid. But let's, let's support the community from a tech point of view as much as we can. Well, Misha, yet again, you've been a fantastic insight there into how things work. Thank you so much for your time today and stay safe and we'll see you again soon. Pleasure. Thanks, Mark. Stay safe as well. Cheers. Bye.